Welcome back to Teleturoan. And now, let us continue our discussion on the properties of ionic and covalent compounds. Properties of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds form crystals. The ionic bond formed between the cation and anions is very strong. The ions are arranged in a regular geometric structure called crystal lattice. Different ionic compounds have different crystal forms. Naturally occurring ionic crystals are found in rocks and minerals. They are mixed with transition metal elements to give rise to brilliant colors. Second, ionic compounds have high melting points and high boiling points. The ions in a crystal lattice are closely packed together, creating a strong electrostatic force of attraction between them. This figure shows a small representative bit of the crystal lattice of sodium chloride. The more ions in a crystal structure, the stronger the ionic bonds. And therefore, a large amount of energy is required to overcome these bonds. Table salt melts at 801 degrees Celsius and boils at 1,413 degrees Celsius. Ceramics are made up of ionic compounds and are effective heat resistant and are suitable for cookware. Third, ionic compounds are hard and brittle. Because of the strong electrostatic attraction between ions, ionic compounds, therefore, they are hard and difficult to separate. But ionic compounds can be also considered as brittle. For instance, when pressure or a mechanical force is being applied like striking a hammer on the crystal, it will cause changes to move closer. Number four, ionic compounds conduct electricity when dissolved in water. When ionic compounds are dissolved in water to form an aqueous solution, the cations and anions are dissociated or separated and are free to conduct electricity through the solution. These ionic substances that conduct electricity are referred to as electrolytes. The figure shows a simple electrolysis setup where two electrodes, positive and negative, are connected to a light bulb and a source such as a battery. When an ionic compound, say for example salt, is dissolved in water, the ions break out individually into cations and anions. These ions are then free to move. When the electrodes are dipped into the salt solution, the cations flow into the negative electrode while the anions flow into the positive electrode causing electricity to flow. This in turn lights the bulb. Ionic compounds are non-conductors of electricity in solid form. Solid ionic compounds do not conduct electricity. Instead, these are good insulators. This is because the ions are locked into its crystal lattice and ions cannot move out. So the solid cannot conduct electricity. Only ionic compounds in liquid form or aqueous solutions are good electrical conductors. Properties of covalent molecular compounds First, covalent compounds generally have much lower melting and boiling points than ionic compounds. When we have an ionic compound, we need to break all of the ionic bonds in order to make it melt. On the other hand, when we have covalent compounds, we don't need to break any bonds at all. This is because covalent compounds form distinct molecules in which the atoms are bound tightly to one another. Unlike in ionic compounds, these molecules don't interact with each other much except through relatively weak forces called intermolecular forces, making them very easy to pull apart from each other. Since they're easy to separate, covalent compounds have low melting and boiling points. Second, covalent compounds are soft and squishy. Covalent compounds have molecules which easily move around each other because there are no bonds between them. As a result, covalent compounds are more likely to be flexible than hard. Number three, covalent compounds tend to be more flammable than ionic compounds. Things burn because they contain carbon and hydrogen atoms that can react to form carbon dioxide and water when heated with oxygen gas. 
Now, that's the definition of a combustion reaction. Since carbon and hydrogen have very similar electronegativities, they are mostly found together in covalent compounds. As a result, more covalent compounds than ionic compounds are flammable. For covalent compounds don't conduct electricity in water. Electricity is conducted in water from the movement of ions from one place to the other. These ions are the charge carriers which allow water to conduct electricity. Since there are no ions in the covalent compounds, they don't conduct electricity in water. Number five, covalent compounds are not usually soluble in water. There's a saying that like dissolves like. This means that compounds tend to dissolve in other compounds that have similar properties, particularly polarity. Since water is a polar solvent and most covalent compounds are fairly nonpolar, many covalent compounds don't dissolve in water. Of course, this is a generalization and not set in stone. There are many covalent compounds that dissolve quite well in water. However, the majority of them don't because of this rule. Let's talk about polar and nonpolar bonds. Covalent molecular compounds can be polar or nonpolar. The polarity of molecules results from the differences in the electronegativity of the abandoned atoms. Electronegativity or EN is the ability of an atom in a molecule to attract shared electrons toward it. This figure shows the electronegativity values of the elements in the periodic table. The greater the electronegativity of an atom, the stronger is its ability to attract shared electrons towards itself and away from the less electronegative atom. The electrons are not shared equally and part of the molecule carries a partial passive charge and the other part carries a slightly negative charge, creating a dipole. For instance, the covalent bonding between hydrogen and fluorine. Fluorine has an EN or electronegativity equal to 4.0, while hydrogen has an EN equal to 2.1. Thus, fluorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, and so the shared electrons spend more time around the fluorine atom, creating a partial negative charge. The arrow points to the slightly negative side of the molecule. This kind of bond is a polar covalent bond. Now, this figure shows an equal sharing of electrons between hydrogen and fluorine. When two identical atoms covalently bonded with each other like diatomic hydrogen, there would be equal sharing of electrons between the hydrogen atoms. This type of bond is a nonpolar covalent bond. This figure shows equal sharing of electrons between two hydrogen. To determine if the type of bond is polar or nonpolar, one has to consider the electronegativity difference between the bonded atoms. The greater the difference, the more polar is the bond. Let's consider this table, the electronegativity difference to classify bonds. When the electronegativity difference is equal to 0 to 0 0.4, the bond type is nonpolar covalent. If your electronegativity difference is equal to 0.5 to 1.9, its bond type is called polar covalent. If it's 2.0 or higher, it's an ionic bond. Now let's have an activity. Based on the electronegativity difference between the given atoms, determine whether the bond that will form between the atoms is nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, or ionic. Take note that you should use your periodic table to determine the electronegativity of each element here. For number 1, hydrogen and chlorine. Number 2, magnesium and oxygen. Number 3, sodium and chlorine. Number 4, calcium and bromine. And last number, hydrogen and hydrogen. Now let's answer our activity. The electronegativity difference is equal to 0 0.9, which means it is a polar covalent. For number 2, magnesium and oxygen, the electronegativity difference is equal to 2.3, so the answer is ionic. For number 3, sodium and chlorine, En is equal to 2.1, so the answer is ionic. Number 4, calcium and bromine. En is equal to 
which means it is an ionic bond. And for our last number, hydrogen and hydrogen, the En is equal to zero. The answer is nonpolar covalent. You did a great job. Thank you for your active participation. I hope that you learned a lot. This has been Randolph and Cruz of Padre Gregorio Chrysostomo Integrated School. Till our next episode of Deped Hour Teletruan. Good day and God bless.